To hear Ravel's sweetly haunting melody is alone enough to invoke the sadness of war. To see his piano concerto for left hand performed as intended by a one-handed pianist is breathtaking. It is such an honour to be playing to be playing the Ravel Left Hand Concerto on Armistice Day. I think for me the main connection is the fact that I'm the first one-handed pianist to play it since it was commissioned by a one-handed pianist, um, Paul Wittgenstein. And the last time he played this concerto was in 1951 at the proms. Wittgenstein had only just established himself as a concert pianist in Vienna as World War I broke out. He was called up to go to battle, as so many were. And within about, I think the figure was about six months of, of being you know, on the front, he took a Russian bullet to his right arm and you know, had to have his right arm amputated. He was then a prisoner of war. And during his time, he found an old crate and he turned this crate over and he chalked on piano keys and he worked tirelessly to try and arrange pieces that he knew, but for left hand alone to see if it was possible. Once free, he used his great wealth to commission some of the world's great composers to write pieces for him. Ravel, Prokofiev, Benjamin Britten, Richard Strauss, he commissioned them to write left-hand alone works for him. And that steely determination, he used his, his position to create those opportunities, I think that's hugely admirable. It's left as a legacy a body of work for Nicholas McCarthy, born without a right hand, who overcame huge obstacles to become the first ever one-handed pianist to graduate from the Royal College of Music. What message do you hope playing this piece on Armistice Day will send out? I think I, I want to, you know, through Ravel's music, make people really remember and make people really feel what so many people gave up for them and for all of us.